girl players of WoW. Taro here bringing you a mining 1 to 600 leveling guide. And for more free WoW guides, check out my website at tarowowguides.com. In this video, I'll show you how to level mining 1 to 600 the fastest and easiest through farming. A good profession to level and farm with mining is herbalism, and some good professions to go with mining are blacksmithing, jewel crafting, and engineering. Check my website for guides on those. Before you get started, you'll want to download the add-ons, routes, and gather mate or something similar from curse.com, while interface, or wherever you get your add-ons from. You might also want a few mining bags or at least have a lot of empty bag space. Then find a mining trainer and learn Apprentice Miner. Make sure to buy a mining pick from the supplies vendor. This will give you plus 10 to mining and needed for following my guide or you'll need to get an extra 10 points before leaving a zone. Now that you have all that out of the way, you can begin mining in any starter zone. I'm using Duratar, but you can use any starter zone you like. Alliance can use Dung Moreau, Elwyn Forest, or any other starting zone. Make sure your mini-map is zoomed out all the way and that you're tracking mining nodes. Oh, and to make mining even easier, go to your interface options by hitting escape and clicking interface. Then in the controls section, check the auto loot box. We'll be farming copper ore to get started, and you can just follow the route on the screen, or ones on my website, or even ones found in my custom routes available through the routes add-on that is linked in the info of this video. Once we roll around the zone one or two times, we head back to the trainer and smelt the copper ore we got. This should get you to 60 skill level in mining where you can train everything available, including journeyman mining. Alright, now on to the next zone, which is Hillsbrad. To get there, just hop on the Tearsful Glade Zep if you're Horde, or fly there if you're Lions. Not sure if anyone noticed, but Blizzard has seemed to nerf me and I no longer have my air mount boots called air hoofs. The nerf axe is a bit crazy if you ask me, kinda would like them to just put it in a locker, maybe forget about it, that'd be great. Well when you get to Hillsbrad, follow the outside route mining up all the tin and silver ore. Once you loop back around, you can go to the inside route and after looping around it, head back out to the outside route. You can hit up the caves on this route if you see a bunch of nodes inside, but it's totally up to you and for some it might even slow you down. Some alternative locations to Hillsbrad are Dustwood, Northern Stranglethorn, or Ashenvale. I prefer Hillsbrad Foothills whether Horde or Alliance since it is covered with tin and has a very simple route. For those alternatives, or any alternatives to any of the routes I talk about, you can always see my website for those. On this route, you'll need to keep it up until you hit skill level 105. You can stop and smelt bars, but I've found it a bit faster to just keep farming. At 105, pop over a zone to Western Plaguelands and start on the route I have by going clockwise. In WPL, you mostly find iron ore with the occasional gold vein. You might also be surprised to really start finding competition. I wasn't alone here and saw 3-4 to four people also mining and there might have even been more. If it's really bad or you prefer somewhere else, Feralis or the Cape of Stranglethorn can be pretty good. Keep at this route and after 1 or 2 laps you should hit skill level 150 and can go back to the trainer. Get back on the Zep to Orgrimmar for Horde or grab the boat to Duskwall and Marsh for Alliance and train expert mining along with anything available. Now you can mine until 225 and to get a head start on that, smelt up all the gold ore you found. With all that out of the way, head over to Fellwood. This place has tons of easily farmable mithril ore with the rare find of true silver ore. It does seem to have a little bit more competition than the previous zones, but shouldn't be too much of a problem because of fast respawn times. Just follow my route around clockwise and you'll be fine. Just like other zones, you can of course use a different zone to get the skill ups you need. Some might like burning steps instead, or even others. When you get around 190 skill level, at about 3 quarters of a lap, cross back over the route and head towards the northeast, mining until you hit 205. Then cross over into winter spring and follow this route counterclockwise, farming up all the thorium ore you see until you reach the west border of Mount Hygel. Fly up to Mount Hygel and take the port back to Orgamar or Stormwind. Hit up the mining trainer and learn Artisan Miner along with everything else. 
Next, grab some extra skill points by smelting all the thorium ore you've found so far. After that, go back to Mount Hyjal through the port and fly back down into Winter Spring. Or in my case, free fall into Winter Spring. Don't try this at home, kids. I'm a professional. In Winter Spring, continue on the route counterclockwise. Mostly, you'll be farming small and rich thorium veins and get tons of it. When you pass by Everlook, you can stop and smelt some thorium ore to get faster skill ups to 290, but I decided to pass it by and stick to gathering since I was having a bit of fun reliving some classic WoW nostalgia. I constantly ran into other players, and this other druid was at my hooves throughout my entire route. Lucky for me, their computer was probably slower than mine, so they were very easily outmined. If you think it'll be very bad on your server, some alternatives are Ungoro Crater, which may have even more competition, or Sylphus, which should be a bit harder to level in, but have a good chance at having zero competition. After about a lap and a half, you should have a skill level of 265, and can now head back up into Mount Hyjal to take the port, or a hearthier way back to town. Then, go to the Mage Trainer, and next to them will be a portal to the Blasted Lands. Take that and go through the dark portal into Hell's Fire Peninsula. And this is a great time to take a break and get a snack or a drink or both, so have at it. Alright, so after your break, start out on my route going counterclockwise. Expect Hell's Fire to have a lot of players around, which means even more competition than any zone so far. Also, since this is the first flying zone that they had, the nodes tend to be a bit more spread out than the lower level zones. Once you've lived back around into the center of the zone and have at least 275 in mining, speak with the mining trainer in Thralmar for Horde or Honor Hold for Alliance and learn Master Mining and anything else available. You can smelt some of the fell iron ore you've found so far as well. Continue on this route until you hit at least skill level 315 or make a full lap back around to the main town. Then smelt all the fell iron ore you have left, which should get you to around skill level 325, but you only need 315 to go on to the next zone. Alright, with all that smelted, fly your way over into Blade's Edge Mountains, mining any nodes you see along the way. This is probably the coolest cave ever, and it's a super rare find. Almost all other caves would have dismounted me or taken me out of flight form, but this one doesn't. I like that. The rich adamantite and corium aren't farmable at this skill level, so check your mini map, and if it's one of those, just skip it and move on to the next node. While leveling mining, you might also want to set auto dismount and flight to enabled inside the control section of your interface options. This makes it so the second you click on a mining node, you're dismounted or taken out of flight form. One great thing about blades is the competition should be pretty non-existent. However, some may like Nagrand, Zangra Marsh, or the Isle of Kildanis better, which is why, just like any other section of leveling, you can find those alternatives in my custom routes or on tarwellguides.com. Okay, so continue on my route until you reach skill level 350, which should only take one full lap or so. Then hearth back to Org or Stormwind and learn Grandmaster Miner along with anything else available. If you have any Eternium, smelt that and then use it to make Fell Steel, which should give you an extra few points that'll get you started on the next mining section. At this point, you'll also want to empty your bags if you haven't done so already. I just send everything off to an alt, which makes it really easy. Okay, so when all your bags are empty and sorted, grab the Zep or boat and head over to Boreen Tundra in Northrend. Boreen Tundra has a pretty simple route, but it may take you two or so laps to get the skill points you need. Nodes are distant, especially when there are a few others farming in the zone. After your first lap, you can stop by Warsong or Valance Keep and smelt whatever cobalt ore you have for some easy skill ups to 375. Howling Forge is also a great place to mine cobalt ore, and you can find a route for it on my website. After you get to skill level 390, you can head over into Skullzer Basin, where farming gets a bit easier, although it could be a lot more competitive. I saw at least 6 others in the zone farming, which kind of slowed things down, but it was still pretty fast compared to other zones. If you really don't want to deal with it, you can go to Zoldrak, but you'll still need to do some finishing up in Storm Peaks right after that. 
After a few laps, you should hit skill level 415 or more and can go back to the mining trainer to learn everything available and smelt your way to 425 using the serenite ore that you just found. Then make sure to train illustrious grandmaster miner and head to the portals. Take the portal to Mount Hygel and start out on the route I have on the screen. Here we'll be farming obsidium ore and the amount of nodes starts to become a bit more condensed than the previous zones were. But competition here will be slightly higher than the wrath zones. You also start to have more of a chance to pull mobs, but it's still pretty low. This is a really easy zone to mine in and after you make your second lap you should be around skill level 465. At 465 head back to the portal and hop over into deep home. In deep home you'll mostly be farming obsidian ore with the occasional elementium and rich obsidian veins. You might even find some rich elementium but you're not going to be able to mine them. As a bonus, farming in Deep Home can give you a chance at the rare elite stone drake, Aeonax, who drops rains of the phosphorescent stone drake. After you make a lap or less, you should skill up to around 490 and can heart or take the portal back to Orgrimmar or Stormwind as long as you have 2-3 to three stacks of Elementium ore to smelt to 500. Once you smelt your Elementium to 500, learn everything available including Zen Master Miner. Finally, you can head out to Pandaria's Jade Forest and start farming the max level or Ghost Iron. This is where things really get fun. If you need a mining trainer in the Jade Forest, he's right here in Honeydew Village. The Alliance one is in Pawdon Village with the neutral one below Tian Monastery in front of the Greenstone Quarry. In the Jade Forest, we'll be using my top route that you see on the map, but Alliance can use the bottom route if you're starting off in Pawdon Village. Anyone going from Dawn's Blossom can pick either. The main nodes you'll come across are regular ghost iron, but sometimes you're going to find rich ghost iron and you're not going to be able to mine it right away. Some of the best classes to use for mining are Paladin and Druid. DKs are good as well along with other classes for different reasons like Vanish from a Rogue or Feign Death from a Hunter. My top route has the Windward Isle as part of the route, but it's one area I would avoid if you don't want to mess with mobs. It can also have rich ghost iron and trillium, which you won't be able to mine right away. So instead, you can just continue the route and forget about Windward Isle. At any time, if you do pull aggro, CC them first, mine, and then blow them up by popping all your cooldowns. Sometimes you can find yourself killing a mob and a fellow player will come up from behind and rob your node without thinking twice. CCing the mob and mining first will prevent this. If it's an enemy player you can always kill them too. Make sure throughout leveling you take breaks now and then and talk to friends, blare music, or zone out watching TV. Having fun should be top priority while doing anything in a video game. But getting to the fun might take some boring tasks that need IRL tools to become more enjoyable. After you get to 570 or so, points will be slower to get and at 590 regular ghost iron nodes will show grey on the tooltip. That doesn't mean you won't get skill ups though. You still get skill ups all the way up to 600 even from regular ghost iron nodes. But it's gonna probably take 2, 3 or even 4 regular nodes to get one skill point. Could you go to another zone and find more rich in Trillium or even Kyperite to get to 600 easier? Sure, but it won't be any faster and you should look at this as gold making and not leveling. The skill ups are a bonus, but really once you get into Pandaria your main focus should be shifted from leveling to actual gold making. It shouldn't take any more than 3 laps to finish off leveling mining to 600 and to get to this point for most players should have taken 4 to 5 hours all the way from skill level 1. Grats on 600 and I have a video series showing you how to make gold easily mining in Pandaria. If you're watching this video on its release, the gold making videos will follow shortly after. Now that you're done leveling, learn anything left from the mining trainer. Next is my favorite, put everything on the auction house and make some decent money for the time you invested into leveling. I list everything up in full stacks for 12 hours if it's stones, or in bars, and singles for gems and anything else. A lot of people ask me if they should sell ore or smelt it into bars. The simple answer is whichever sells for more. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. 
For the long answer though, it does really depend. If the price is only slightly different, save your time and sell the ore. If the price is a huge difference, smelt the bars. But keep in mind, smelting can be super time consuming and you could go out and farm a lot more in the time it took to smelt the stuff in the first place. At the same time though, smelting allows you to go AFK and get some IRL stuff done. So there's pros and cons to both. Before I even finish listing everything, a lot has already sold. And after a day, most everything sold aside from a little bit of the low level gems. The total came to 6,734 gold, which is pretty awesome for our level session taking only 4 hours. Well that's it, and grats again on 600 and mining. For mob gold making with mining, check out the different videos that will become active once they're released that are here linked on the screen. Thanks for watching everyone, and for more profession leveling and gold making guides, please subscribe, visit tarawildguides.com, and share this video. Now go mine your way to profits. One gold coin, two gold coin, three gold coin, four gold coin.